Flying's the way to travel, and the way to fly is TWA, Trans World Airlines. Presenting Cary Grant and Betsy Drake as Mr. and Mrs. Blanding in a new series based on Eric Hodgins' best-selling novels, Mr. Blanding's Bills His Dream House and Blanding's Way. Did you know that approximately every three minutes around the clock, a TWA Skyliner is making a landing at one of the airports along its 32,000-mile route? You love to fly high up in the sky. You ride the airways, starry stairways. Smoother and swifter, flying the way. And the best way to fly, T-W-A. Mr. and Mrs. Blanding, starring Cary Grant and Betsy Drake. And now let's take a trip to Lansdale, Connecticut, and look in on the Blandings family. It is early morning. Everyone is asleep, and the day starts, as it does in every other house, with... Jim has set the alarm a little early this morning so that he can get up and do his exercises before Muriel awakens. So at the sound of the alarm, the bedclothes are thrown back, the bed springs creak, the alarm is shut off, and we hear... Jim, time to get up. <laughs> a day has started in the Blandings' household. The children get dressed, the table is set, the coffee is poured, the orange juice prepared. All is hustle and bustle. And we hear Muriel say, Jim, time to get up. And so breakfast goes on uneventfully until, as they're reading the morning paper over their second cup of coffee, Muriel suddenly gives a start and says, Jim, Jim Blandings, what does this ad in the paper mean? Hmm? What ad, dear? You know what ad, this one. Well, let's see. Hmm. Wanted girl to work as waitress at summer resort. Must be respectable until Labor Day. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, I'll tell you, it's all in the way you read it. Jim, I'm not referring to that ad. No? No, I'm talking about this one. Estimates wanted to repair barn. Call J.H. Blandings, Lansdale 431. Hmm. Jim, don't tell me you're still thinking of repairing that old barn of ours. Bill Cole says that now is a highly impractical time to do any building. Bill Cole. Bill Cole is a lawyer. What does he know about such things? He knows what a fool those contractors made of you when you were building this house. Muriel, I resent that. It's true, isn't it? Yeah, but I resent it. <laughs> anyway, they won't do it this time. If their bids are too high, I'll do the work myself. You? But don't look so surprised. I know how to pound nails. I can use my head. <laughs> not the best way. When do you plan to begin this project? Today. I'll work every weekend on it until it's finished. And when it is... We'll call our grandchildren out to look at it. <laughs> Muriel, do you have anything better to do than to stand out here and watch me? Yes, but I want to see this or I won't believe it. And I may not believe it then. Thank you for the vote of confidence. And hand me another nail. This one got bent. Here you are. Oh, dear. Bent this one, too. Here's another one. Hmm. Here's a bent one. Perhaps it'll straighten out. <laughs> please, please, please. Stop being funny and hand me a heavier nail. All right, dear, this one's practically a railroad spike. Oh! Oh, my finger! Darling, did you have an accident? No, no, of course not. I hit myself just for a lark. <laughs> Come on, look at my finger, look. It's bleeding, I think. Let's see. Hmm. Better put some iodine on it. Can't take chances. No, I suppose not. Here. This is good stuff. Really stings. It does? Well, maybe I don't need... Now, put out your finger. Uh, but, Muriel... There we are. Ow! <laughs> Muriel, you enjoyed that. Not too much. Anyhow, what did you want me to do? Kiss it and make it well? Well, I'd like that better. But it would never do. Kissing spreads germs. Oh, 
Now, that's a ridiculous rumor circulated by old maids who aren't circulating. <laughs> no, it isn't. Now, run along. Let me get to work. Harder work than I thought. Oh, well, only way to get it done without costing a fortune. Oh, Jim, Mr. Kraft is here in answer to your ad. Huh? Hello, Mr. Blandings. <laughs> oh, oh, hello, Mr. Kraft. I'm sorry, but I've decided to do the job myself, as you can see. Yes. <laughs> Jim, what in the world are you doing? What do you mean, what am I doing? Well, for one thing, you're using the saw upside down. <laughs> Well, there's a woman for you, eh, Mr. Kraft? Muriel, I want to saw the underside of this board, so I turn the saw over. <laughs> well, that's the way we do it. Why don't you just turn the board over? <laughs> oh. Oh, well, you can do it that way, too. Uh, yeah. You sure you don't want me to contract the job, Mr. B? Definitely not. I can do it myself. Okay, but I think I ought to be able to handle the job for somewhere in the neighborhood of $1,500. I'm not interested. Yeah, well, we'll see. Mind if I drop back from time to time? <laughs> I get more jobs that way. <laughs> oh, hi, Miss Blannings. How's, uh, every little thing? Oh. Is, uh... Is that the way you pound nails? Mm. Bend a lot of them, I bet. Uh, why don't you hold that hammer near the end? It might help. Mr. Kraft. Yeah, Mr. Blanding? Come here. Like this? No, closer. Here? Closer yet. That's fine. Now, I'd like to ask you a question. Okay. How would your wife like it if you came home for dinner with a hammer sticking out of your head? <laughs> Hi, Mr. Blannings. Uh, that stringer got enough support? Yep. Hope it uh, don't sag. Nope. Main thing is she's strong enough. Yep. What's the matter? Got your mouth full of nails again? No. Well, what is it full of? Swear words. <laughs> Frankly, this remodeling is taking longer than I intended. Well, just say the word, Mr. Blannings. Be glad to take over. Yes, sir. 2,500 ought to do it. 2,500? But you said it would be in the neighborhood of 1,500. Sorry, just moved to a better neighborhood. <laughs> Jim, hadn't you better call Mr. Kraft? Mr. Kraft? I wouldn't hire that money-hungry monster to drill a hole in a lifesaver. But Mr. Kraft warned me that... Muriel, please, have a little faith. But you're liable to knock down that joist. Does it occur to you that may be what I intend to do? But it's the fulcrum on which the stress of this side of the, the building is balanced. That's why it's important to repair it. But you can't knock it out to repair it. No. No, you have to shore it up first. Why? Why? Yes, why? <laughs> Any other questions? So I thought, Mr. Kraft, I'd better call you out on the job. No, I thought you would. Uh... Sam, you got those figures ready yet? Got it, Mr. Kraft. Uh, here's my estimate. Hmm. May I see it? No, no, no. Sam, aren't you a little low on the overhead sprinkler installation? Uh, overhead sprinklers? What are they for? Cuts down your fire insurance. You'll go for that, won't you? Oh, well, yes, I guess so, yeah. Oh, they always do. And, uh, <laughs> now about the aluminum stall gates. There will be no aluminum stall gates. Oh, fair enough. Then we can put that money in on the fluorescent lighting. 
What fluorescent lighting? Mr. Blandings, you can't milk cows in the dark. Oh, you can, but you waste a lot of time fumbling. <laughs> now, just a minute, you two. Mr. Kraft, I called you out here to do a simple repair job on a barn. Now, just what is your figure for the job? In round figures, $4,500. Mr. Kraft, I'm afraid we don't understand each other at all. Well, why, you want a good sound barn, don't you? Of course, but... If a thing's worth doing, it's worth doing right, I always say. That's what I always say. Uh, but, Mr. Kraft, $4,500. It isn't the cost, it's the results, I always say. That's what I always say. Well, you may stop saying it right now. Great Scott, at that price, I might as well build a new barn. Exactly. That's just what I was going to say. Yes, but the cost... Hardly more than to rebuild. Now, now, for instance, tearing down the old one is a salvage job. I guess that should bring about, uh, oh, 500. Uh, oh, I hadn't thought of that. Oh, you gotta figure everything, I always say. Is that what you always say, Sam? <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I do. Good boy. All right, Mr. Kraft, tell you what we'll do. You tear down the old barn, it's not worth fixing, I guess, and then we'll talk about building a new one. All right, it's a deal. Jim, are those men about through tearing down that barn? They're hauling the last of it away right now. Oh, that's a relief. They've driven over my petunia beds at least a dozen times. Jim, are you sure you're doing the wise thing? What do you mean? Well, this building a new barn, we don't need it. Of course we don't. So why build one? Jim, Mr. Kraft thinks you're going to build a new one. Aha. But I'm a little too smart for Mr. Kraft this time. He stuck me on the bids, but now the shoe is on the other foot. Are you sure? He's awfully clever. Well, don't you think I'm clever? Darling, you're my husband. Well, <laughs> that does not preclude the possibility of my doing something clever once in a while. Oh, here comes Mr. Kraft up the walk now. Watch this. Ah, uh, Mr. Kraft. And Sam. Howdy. All through? Oh, yes. Just hauled the last load out. Uh, hello, Mrs. Blandings. Hello, gentlemen. Now, I guess we ought to talk about the new barn, eh? No time like the present, I always say. Well, Mr. Kraft... Cr There's more. Now, Sam. That's what I always say. <laughs> now, uh, go ahead, Muriel. You tell him, dear. All right. Mr. Kraft. I have decided not to build the new barn just yet. Not to build it? No. In fact, I may never build it. I didn't say I would, you know. No? Oh. I guess the only thing we have to do is to settle up on the salvage from the old barn, eh? Guess so. Fine. I believe $500 was the price agreed upon, right? Right. <laughs> oh, this is where you get a surprise, Muriel. It's going to be a present for you. Why, Jim... You don't have to pay me now, Mr. Blandings. I can send you a bill. Oh, I just did it. <laughs> I pay you? Well, naturally. That's your best offer? Well, you didn't think I was going to pay you to haul that old barn away, did you? You said it would be worth something for salvage. That's why I was only charging you 500 I think you can put it back, Jim. What? The shoe that was on the other foot. <laughs> Sending this letter airmail, Dad will get it tomorrow. My business would be lost without airmail service. And airmail's so reasonable. Just six cents a letter. Yes, most everyone agrees that an airmail letter can do great things. Cover thousands of miles. Cover them fast. And at only six cents a letter, it's quite a bargain. But perhaps you hear some people say that this bargain is possible only because of government subsidies to the airline. Well, what they really mean is that the United States Post Office Department has, in effect, said to the scheduled airlines, look, you can do this job cheaper than the government can. So you carry the airmail, and we'll give you enough pay to help you develop a great national air transportation system. And when your passenger and cargo services are paying their own way, we'll expect you to carry the airmail at a much lower cost. Well, friends, TWA is holding to that agreement. TWA, like all self-supporting domestic airlines, receives no subsidy for carrying the mails in this country. And what's more, 85% of all airmail and all the air parcel posts carried by all the scheduled airlines 
is flown without the benefit of a subsidy. And so you see, when you put an airmail stamp on a letter, or when you send a package by fast air parcel post, you're really getting the benefit of a bargain. A mail service that can't be duplicated for speed and economy. All made possible by the vision and foresight of the men of the U.S. Postal Service and the cooperation of the scheduled airlines of the United States. And now the second act of Mr. and Mrs. Blanding, starring Cary Grant and Betsy Drake. Have you ever seen that famous statue, The Thinker? Well, at the moment, Jim Blandings is seated in the living room, and he looks as though he were posing for a new statue called The Brooder. Over and over in his mind, he is chewing the words uttered by Mr. Kraft. I don't pay you, Blandings. <laughs> you pay me. <laughs> yes, Mr. Blandings is chewing the words, but he's having a very rough time swallowing them. Jim. Huh? Jim. What's the matter, dear? Cat got your tongue? No, Mr. Kraft has my tongue. My tongue, my wallet, my shoelaces, and my shorts. Jim, it's not that serious. Just pay Mr. Kraft the 500 and drop the matter. Don't keep banging your head against the wall. I am not banging my head against the wall. I'm sitting here quietly and thinking. Oh, well, what are you thinking of doing? Banging my head against the wall. <laughs> Instead of getting $500, I pay him 500 How could I make such a mistake? Is it possible that I'm that stupid, that idiotic, that... Muriel, I would thank you to stop nodding your head. I hadn't realized I was. Well, my 500 is gone and so is the barn. From now on, we just have to get along without one. Oh, don't worry, dear. If worst comes to worst, we can always sleep in the house like people. I wouldn't build a barn now if they paid me. They won't, dear. Then I won't build one, and that's that. Oh, now, who can that be? It's probably Mr. Dabney from the bank. I forgot to tell you, he called that he was coming over. Mr. Dabney? What did he want? It was something about the barn. He seemed very angry. Coming! Well, hello, Mr. Dabney. Come right in. Good morning. Hello, Mr. Dabney. Mr. Blendings, you tore down our barn. My barn. Mr. Kraft's barn. Mr. Kraft's barn? He just left here 15 minutes ago, dragging his barn behind him. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Blandings, our bank has a mortgage on your property. Part of that property was the barn. You had no right to dispose of it without our consent. I did not intend to get rid of it. It became necessary in the process of building a new one. Oh, if you're building a new one, there's no problem. I'm not. You said you were. He was, but he's not. Because the money that was isn't. So how can he if there isn't what there was? I, uh... <laughs> I may not be able to repeat that to the board of directors. Well, it's quite simple, Mr. Dabney. I destroyed the barn thinking I might build a new one. I just decided against it. Mr. Blandings, do you remember page 7 of the mortgage, clause 3, paragraph 8, section E, part 5, line 8, of amendment 6, note 12, under article F, Mr. Dabney, if I stopped long enough to read the mortgage, I wouldn't need to build a house. I could stay at the old lady's home. <laughs> well, you have destroyed property without the bank's consent. I shall be forced to invoke Article F. What is Article F? According to Article F, unless you rebuild the barn immediately, your entire mortgage is due at once. Now, see here, Mr. Dabney, you can't bully and coerce me. I won't be bluffed with a bunch of legal gibberish. I intend to discuss this with my attorney. Please do. I shall. Hello. Circle 49929 in New York, please. I wouldn't build a barn now if half the cars in the country were left out in the rain. Jim never was a milk drinker. <laughs> now, oh, Mr. Cole, please. Bill, Bill, this is Jim. Guess who's here? Mr. Dabney. And do you know what he tried to tell me? <laughs> Said I couldn't tear down a barn on my own property because of the mortgage. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. <clears throat> <laughs> Mr. Dabney? Yes, Mr. Blendings. What color barn would you like? <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Quince. Morning. 
Take that wheelbarrow up there, George. All right, Mr. Green. You know, I sort of thought we'd have the cement all poured by this morning. Well, I thought so, too. I thought so, and you thought so, but it ain't. Mm. Well, I guess you have to expect a few delays. I figured you ought to have it finished by tonight. I figure we ought to. By tonight. Good. I figure we ought to, and you figure we ought to, but uh, <clears throat> we ain't. <laughs> Having trouble. What trouble can you have with a foundation? You dig a hole and pour the cement. Exactly what we did. We dug a hole and we poured the cement. Mr. Quince, there is no cement in that hole. That give you an idea of the trouble we got? <laughs> what are you trying to say? Mr. Blandings, our hole has a hole in it. <laughs> well, now, now, that's impossible. I say it's impossible and you say it's impossible. So far, we poured three loads down the impossible. <laughs> Must they hit an old well or a tunnel? But how much more cement will it take? Depends on what's at the other end of that hole. <laughs> oh, hi, Mr. Blanding. Good afternoon, Mr. Wretch. Fine crew of carpenters here. Best five in the country. I can tell that. They look very competent sitting there on the lawn. Oh, we can't go any further till the plumber finishes. Well, well, where in heaven's name is the plumber? Mr. Blandings, I'm a carpenter. I don't ask the plumber any questions. I don't even look at what he does. Why, if I so much as point my finger at a pipe, I have to pay dues in three more unions. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, I'll find him. Mr. Beasley! Uh, Mr. Beasley! Jim! What is it you want? Muriel, have you seen the plumber? The what, dear? The plumber. The man with a friend. Have you seen him? <laughs> oh, you mean the nice man who offered to fix my faucet? Oh, great balls of fire. You didn't take him off the job for that. But, dear, he offered to do it free. Well, while he's fixing that faucet free, I've got six carpenters waiting. It's costing me $56 an hour. Muriel, get that plumber out of the barn. I can't. Why not? He's gone. Gone where? Where they always go. Back to the shop for a washer. Hi, Mr. and Mrs. Blandings. Hi, Sam. Where's Mr. Rex? Oh, oh, he's in town today. I'm taking over. Well, good. How are things going? Oh, about like you'd expect. You know the building game. Nail it together, then wait to see if it falls apart. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mr. Kraft left with the blueprints. Uh, what do you want I should do with them lintels? What lintels? The lintels between the lally columns. Uh, oh, those lintels. Yeah. Uh, you want I should rabbit them or not? I thought the barn was for cows. Oh, please, Muriel, I'll handle this. Rabbit is a carpenter's term. I, I don't think you need to rabbit the lintels. Okay, you're the doctor. Hey, Joe! Yeah. Jim, why did you say that? You don't even know what he's talking about. Muriel, when you're as experienced as I am at the building game, you realize it's always cheaper to say no than yes. <laughs> oh. Yes, Sam, what do you want? If you got any of them rabbited little set up, rip them out. Okay. Rip them out. Hey. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. <laughs> there you are, Mr. Blandings. Of course, it'll take two days to put them back up again. Muriel, if I ever open my mouth again, will you do one thing? What's that? Rabbit me right in the lintels. <laughs> Mr. Blanding, you owe us $350 for your completion bond. Mr. Blanding, that 220-volt switch will be another $90. Blandings, we'll need another hundred for replacing those rabbited lintels. The Blandings, those water troughs will take an extra two hundred. Mr. Blandings, stop! Gentlemen, I have tried to be patient. I have tried to be understanding. But the end has come. The well has run dry. The lamb has been shorn. The screwball is unscrewed. I don't care how fine a barn I have or whether it gets completed or not. All I want is that you go away. All of you. Now. And if I don't see a contractor again for 99 years, it'll seem like the pause that refreshes. <laughs> but, Mr. Blanding. Yes! I just came to tell you the barn is finished. <laughs> Terry 
Billy Grant and Betsy Drake will be back with us in just a moment. Friends, did you know that TWA is the only airline that goes all the way across the U.S. and overseas to Europe, the Middle East, and India? Yes, you can board a TWA plane in 60 cities in the United States and fly to London, Paris, Rome, and other world centers abroad. And say, just ask anyone who travels a lot, and you'll find out that this one airline service is mighty important. It means you buy only one ticket. You enjoy the same courteous service all the way, and you don't have to worry about complicated connections. So fly the finest. Fly TWA, Trans World Airlines. Next time you plan a trip for business or pleasure, see your friendly travel agent or call your nearest TWA office. You love to fly. The sky, you ride the airways, starish airways, smoother and swifter, flying so low, and the best way to fly, T-W-A. Here again are Cary Grant and Betsy Drake. Muriel, I'm already showing a profit on the new barn. That's wonderful, dear, but how? I made a deal to print Fly T-W-A in big letters on the side of the barn, and then in small letters I'll print to 60 cities in the United States and 20 world centers abroad. But what about the profit? Well, they pay me $240 a year for that. That's very clever, dear. Well, that's just the beginning. With the $240, I'm going into the poultry business. I made a deal to buy 200 chickens and a rooster. (laughs) 200 chickens and a rooster? Yeah. Why, that barn will make us independent. Not half as independent as that rooster. Good night, dear. Good night, everyone. Tune in next week, same time, same station, for Mr. and Mrs. Blanding, starring Cary Grant and Betsy Drake. Brought to you by Transworld Airlines. Across the U.S. and overseas, you can depend on TWA. Betsy Drake appears through the courtesy of RKO Pictures and David O. Selznick. Watch for the next Selznick release, Gypsy Blood, starring Jennifer Jones and produced in Technicolor. Mr. Kraft was played by Jim Backus. Also in our cast were Dave Wark, Leo Clary, Ken Christie, Earl Ross, and Earl Lee. Tonight's show is written by Charles Stewart and Mark Lockman, directed by Warren Lewis and transcribed in Hollywood. Don Stanley speaking.